Hi guys, welcome to Amy Jade Interviews. On this platform, I partner with professionals in the field of women's health and wellness to bring you up-to-date, informative and inspiring content. On today's episode, I interview Jenna Carroll. Jenna specialises in human design readings and is also a practising degree qualified naturopath and nutritionist. Human design, as a broad definition, offers a map or a manual that gives you insight into your unique energetic blueprint and how to live your life accordingly. I really love this chat with Jenna. We go so deep into the main design types, their authority, and so, so much more. Learn about your unique type and dip your toe into the wonders of this practice called human design. Enjoy. Um, I'm here with the beautiful Jenna Carroll, and she's going to talk to me all about human design. She is a naturopath as well. Um, so Jenna, just introduce yourself. Who are you? Sort of what do you do? What are you passionate about? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I am a, I'm a degree qualified naturopath and nutritionist, um, but more recently I've started offering human design readings and I work in clinical practice. I primarily take clients online, but I do also offer in-person consults based on Sydney's Northern Beaches for anyone that's kind of near me. Um, yeah, and I think at this point in time in my practice, I kind of see a wide variety of people and, you know, I think a lot of naturopaths will go, kind of go out there and try and specialize in something, but I really feel that your specialty will really come to you in time. And I think it's really important that, you know, you, you build experience, you know, especially if you're, you're new to practice or you're just coming out of uni, I think it's really important that we don't limit ourselves to one particular thing, but I'd have to say my main interest is not necessarily in, um, you know, understanding a condition or a disease. For me, it's really understanding the person. And I think that's why I've become really interested in things like medical astrology and other methods of holistic analysis, such as like iridology um, and understanding constitutional therapy and human design. So, yeah, I think that's kind of, it kind of also sums up all my passions because of course, health and well-being and mindset and, you know, learning, you know, developing ourselves spiritually is really my passion. So um, work and my passions are like not separated there kind of. No, together. that's so beautiful that you've been able to combine them like that. Yeah. And I totally, I totally resonate with the thought of um, having it like multidimensional as well, because you don't like, it's not such just a physical thing as well. Like it might be a spiritual thing that they need to work on in order to enhance their health and well being and move past it. And that's probably, that's like an offering that I don't feel like many people really give um, clients. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I really feel that like my main, like my obsession, I think since mm. I was really young was, was the more the psycho emotional aspects of health and disease. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's been really important for me to understand, you know, yeah. biology and understanding pathogenesis and the way in which disease is expressed in the human body, but to always kind of be able to step back and see the underlying emotional current that's kind of going rumbling away underneath people's health issues. You know, there's often a disconnect between, you know, our ability to really tune into our individuality that tends to kind of get lost and not to mention you know, which we'll probably go into with this um, chat about human design, but, you mm. know, the way that our society is built is not necessarily right and correct for everybody. So, um, you know, you see a lot of women with a lot of reproductive issues and autoimmune and stuff like that, that have basically been influenced by stress and living a life that isn't in alignment with who they really are. So mm -hmm. I think that's why any kind of system or, um, modality that kind of helps you to understand yourself better it's going to be beneficial not only for your mental health but your physical health as well yeah beautiful so what is um human design just give us like an overview how does it work what is it yeah so i feel like if you asked other human design readers the same question i'm sure that everyone would say something kind of different yeah. but basically just Going back to how it began, it um, was developed through a guy in the 80s called Ra Uruhu. And so it's a relatively new system, but it's actually founded upon four more ancient modalities, such as Kabbalah, the chakra system, 
astrology and the Chinese I Ching, which is a 5,000 year old ancient Chinese text for those that don't know. And it, it basically contains the 64 ways in which humans express themselves. And I think wow. one of the main things I find fascinating about that is that, you know, science has discovered that we have 64 codons within our DNA. So um, it's, it's almost like a genetic component to this as well. So yeah, it's really fascinating. But what it's really providing you is this like energetic map or blueprint of how you should be energetically kind of showing up in this world. You know that everything is an energy exchange in this world. You know, we are um, affecting our environment as we move through the world and also the environment is affecting us as well. And I basically the mechanism behind this as well is that quantum physics is now starting to measure these subatomic particles that actually float in from outer space, literally from stars and the sun called neutrinos. And I know that sounds a bit crazy, but if you can kind of expand your mind a bit and remember that we are a planet floating in the universe and that we are a product of that universe, we are literally made up of the same particles that stars and the sun and planets are. Um, so it makes a lot of sense that these particular particles float in from the atmosphere and they kind of fill in pockets throughout the world at different times at different places and basically when someone is born and when you take your very first breath these particles kind of crystallize within you and it's kind of like this big cosmic stamp that's kind of like gone and stamped you when you're born and it's given you like this kind of energetic imprintation of your energy body because we have more than just our physical body there's many different bodies that we we hold and so this is kind of like your unique, energetic, authentic blueprint. And then, you know, as we move through the world, certain conditioning gets placed upon us, right? You know, depending on our family, depending on our schooling, work, like society, um, you know, the culture that we've been brought up in. So all of these different layers can potentially lead to a lot of conditioning. Some people less than others, but I think the really beautiful thing about human design is it's not so much me telling you who you are with your chart. It's more of a remembering. It's a deep kind of remembering of who you truly are at your essence and core. And a lot of it will like really resonate with the person. That's just what I found through taking um, clients and also within my own chart as well. And, mm -hmm. and, and living in my chart is that it will just resonate on a really core cool level and you'll be like, Oh, wow. Okay. I just could never articulate that or I just thought I was weird and I just like internalized that for all those years. But um, yeah, a big process of human design is called the deconditioning process, which they say takes about seven years, but I believe wow. that we can do that these days because mm -hmm. our evolution is starting to become more rapid. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so that, that process is is, you know, kind of initiated through shining the light of awareness on these parts of your chart or parts of yourself that you've kind of not ha had the light for a long time. So um, that's really what it's kind of doing in a nutshell. Sorry, I know there's a lot of info. It's just hard, like, it's hard it's to hard describe. To break it down, yeah. it. <laughs> no, it, I, honestly, it, it's absolutely incredible. Like the more I've been learning about it and looking into it myself, the more I'm just like, wow, because I feel like, you know, you like low key under the surface, you might be feeling certain things like, oh my God, like I don't want to work nine to five work job or I need more rest than most people. Like, And you start sort of questioning yourself and why you feel different to like what society suppose is like promoting. But say something like that, like a reading your energetic blueprint kind of gives you that permission slip and that sort of realization that like, oh, like that's why I feel that way. Like it's okay, you know? it leads to such powerful self-acceptance, mm -hmm. um, not only of yourself, but other people and realizing that not everyone's going to function the same as you. And mm -hmm. I think that's where so many of the world's problems would just dissipate if we could all just understand that we're all built incredibly differently. They call human design the science of differentiation because when you think about it, like when we get sent to school and stuff, we're kind of taught to be the same as everyone else. We're taught from that point to kind of be like a pack of sheep and think the same and do the same thing. And it doesn't lead to this um, individualized expression, which would, you know, people aren't harnessing their gifts to the highest that they could be. Mm. Um, we've become so homogenized in society and we need to kind of go through that process of, of differentiating ourselves because 
you know, if you're not living in this kind of authentic um, design or like how you're authentically designed to function, life can be really hard. You know, it will feel like you're just white knuckling your way up a hill mm-hmm. and you might look at your friends doing the same thing and be like, right. why can they just do that? Or why can the rest of the world around me seem to be able to do that? But I feel like I cannot physically keep up. And then you feel a lot of shame that, you know, like there's something wrong with you or you're not good enough or you're not worthy enough of whatever that thing is. But um, yeah, we're all incredibly different and the way that we we show up in the world is all going to be so different. So that's um, the beauty of it. Wow. It's, oh, it's just amazing. Like I feel like it's something that everyone should sort of get exposed to and then like have that understanding and then go from there and like sort of um, work things into their life, take things in and out or yeah, just to like suit themselves and their personal needs. Yeah. Like the guy that um, actually created this system, he actually made it for the children because we could all parent like according to people's energy types, for instance, then our world would be very different, you know, would have people expressing more naturally and organically and there'd be way less conditioning placed upon a child that's learned how to actually work with their energy type rather than being kind of congratulated for, you know, doing things that society deems as correct, but for them, it's actually energetically extremely incorrect. And, um, you know, the more they'll veer out of their energy type, the harder life will kind of be and they'll butt their head against a brick wall a lot. And rather than, you know, if you lean more into your design, it's like, the world kind of creates like, it's almost like a fast track to like what you want and what you want to create in your life because um, the universe, or if you want to believe in like reincarnation, um, you've actually picked your exact design before you were born um, to basically fulfill your dharma, your life's purpose, Mm -hmm. and to kind of trigger all the points within you that need to evolve within this lifetime. So um, that's really this gift that you've been given when you're born. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really passionate about it. Absolute magic. So how have you used like your human design reading and sort of changed it into your life? And like, how would your, your life sort of, like your days be structured to like optimize your well being? Yeah, so I mean, I guess I found out about human design maybe three and a half years ago. Um, I will say that Astrology has always been kind of in the background of my life since I was a kid. It's always been something that's fascinated me. And I spent many hours in my teenage years um, learning about my natal chart and certain transits um, that were influencing my particular um, energy at certain times. So that had already been quite, I'd really worked a lot with that, but it wasn't until I was introduced to human design that I got like this really much more practical kind of understanding of me. I kind of describe it like, it's like astrology is like the, like almost like the piece of furniture from Ikea already built, but human design gives you kind of the manual of like how to, how to actually get to that point. And, um, you know, I found out that I was a projector and maybe we'll go into the energy types in a bit, Mm -hmm. but the projector is a bit of a minority of the population where we make up about 21% of the population. And um, this tends to be the type that has some of the biggest kind of aha moments whenever I've done a reading because our society is literally not built to work with the poor projectors um, in this world. So when I found that out, I was like, oh my God, this makes so much sense that I function the way that I do because I spent most of my life probably functioning more like a manifesting generator, which is what you are because um, I have a lot of them in my life and there's other elements of my chart. This is where a lot of nuance comes in that kind of makes me almost function quite a lot like a manifesting generator, but I have to always come back to the fact that I'm not that I'm a a projector and a projector needs to be conservative with their energy. Um, And they're, they tend to be like the most prone to burnout and, um, you know, (laughs) kind of feeling like they have to keep up with the rest of the world all the time, but kind of just, they just can't. Yeah. So I guess like the way that it really did give me permission to just learn that it doesn't matter how much I love to do something. Um, 
I have to still take a break from it as opposed to like you as a manifesting generator, when you're finding that you're really loving what you're doing, you could just continue on that path and just continue doing that thing for, and you'll actually generate energy from doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but for someone like me, I get, lost in that sometimes and think that I am, you know, I'm doing that thing. And then all of a sudden one day I'll just like break down and burn out. And, you know, this is an ever going process for me. It's like, I need to always learn that I have to have a two day weekend. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm going to be really honest. I haven't been doing that for like months yeah. and I, I'm feeling it. Like I'm being really honest. I'm trying to move my schedule around now so that I can accommodate for that. Um, another thing as well, like, I mean, there's obviously so many ways in which learning about my chart has influenced my life, but in terms of my work days and the way I structure my day, it would be that I will only have, like, I'll only put out a lot of my advice and energy for about four to five hours a day. Ideally, like as a projector, it should be two to three hours. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think for me at the moment, that feels quite doable as long as I free up space for the rest of the day in which I can like indulge in my learning and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of been the main thing that I've worked with learning about my energy type. Well, <laughs> that's neat well. though, because down the track, you know, it would save you from like severe burnout or like sort of like a chronic fatigue thing almost like long yeah like, like I've yeah. definitely been in that position before like when I, I used to be a ballet dancer and that oh, kind wow. of that you know I'd train for 12 hours a day and rarely get days off so wow. um I remember falling in a heap when I was like 21 and just was severely chronically fatigued and um burnt out but this typically happens to a projector they've probably had burnout um but they often say it's like it's it's not necessarily, it's like how it's spread out across your life. It's like, how sustainable is that going to be for like 20, 10, 20, 30 years? It's like the way that you know that a projector has been living their design is that they get to 60 and they've still got good energy levels. Mm -hmm. um, wow. You know, got, yeah. So if you've got like a projector that's been grinding up until 60, they'll often be in a really bad place with their physical health or um, yeah, be in really bad burnout. So, so, yeah. so yeah, like what are the different energy types? There's four, is there? Four or five? Yeah, well, there's, there's five, but um, there's four different aura types, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll kind of explain that a little bit. So the energy type is kind of the first entry point into understanding your chart. It's kind of like your sun sign in astrology. It's kind of the first thing that we learn about. And for good reason, because it is the most important element of your chart. If you can just get this thing down, then that will trigger like a ripple effect into everything else within your chart. And, you know, if, if I guess if everyone knew the energy type in this world would be a very different place. Um, so yeah, it is the most fundamental point to start. So <laughs> There are four different aura types. The first one being the manifester and they are about 8% of the population. So they're quite rare. Um, and they are literally here to initiate. They are here to kind of make things happen. They're the true go-getters of society. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, these are the ones that society has kind of been built around kind of, you know, they would have been, back in history, they would have been like the royalty. They would have been the ones that would have been informing all the generators to like, yeah, yeah. you know, do this and do that. Um, that is, I mean, that's not how they're supposed to be working in the world anymore, but that is kind of their energy. They are like, I've heard um, them to be described as like the domino that like knocks down all the other dominoes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they're really, <sighs> they're really here to like work with these. They have quite a distinct urge that kind of comes through them to like an urge to like um, do something for instance, or, um, you know, create some kind of business, you know, or something like that. They'll get a deep urge and will kind of come through them and it's up to them to really their, their strategy and like, you know, the strategies in human design is kind of like the key in which that like on, unlocks your whole, um, your whole chart really is, is utilizing a strategy and their strategy is to inform. So because their aura is a repelling aura and I mean, that 
shouldn't be seen as a bad thing because they are here to, to trailblaze, to really like move through the world in that manner. Um, kind of like a freight train, just like moving straight through. But um, what it can do is it can immediately kind of disgruntle people when they're in the room and if, and whether they realize it or not. I mean, it's just that they have to inform people of what they're up to and what they're doing because they'll like want to like go and like do that thing and do that thing. And they just want to do it alone. They're quite fiercely independent. Um, but uh, it's really important that they inform people before they do it because there'll be a feeling of like the person in the room might be feeling uh, a bit disrespected if they don't let them know because of this particular powerful big aura that they have. And mm -hmm. the funny thing is, is like the manifesto, what they want the most is to have peace and quiet and to like not have to worry about other people, but their life is going to get a hell of a lot easier when they can start to, mm -hmm. yeah, let people know what they're doing because yeah, I think there's a lot of, um, for them, a lot of, shadow around people pleasing because they what they're really here to do is to kind of like not give an f what other people are thinking and to kind of choose to do the thing that they want to do and let people know of it and the right people will jump on board and help them to make that dream happen or make that thing happen so they're not yeah and then you know rather than trying to like people please everyone it's not the correct use of their energy um so yeah that's kind of the manifesto, there's so much more to it, but um, that's them. And then the next type is the generators. And the generators are about 70% of the population. And the reason why it's kind of grouped together, so you've got the pure generators and the manifesting generators, which is what you are. Mm -hmm. And that's because you have your sacral center defined in your chart. So when you look up your chart, it's got a whole bunch of boxes and the second one up um, from the bottom is your sacral center and you guys are energy beings. You guys are literally creating life force and vitality for the rest of the world. Um, and that's a really important thing that you guys are doing. <laughs> so you've really been put here to have quite an intimate relationship with your desires that are kind of being generated through your sacral center. Mm -hmm. So in you pursuing the things that you love to do, that's going to like add more magnetism, more charge, more shininess to your being and to your aura. And you'll start to almost mold the world around you. So where like the manifesto literally can just like get an urge and just say what they want and go and um, like plow through and make that happen. But you guys almost like the world kind of comes to you because you can't just act on an urge. You have to wait for the sacral response, which is a gut literal a very visceral like aha like i've got to do that thing and it will actually come through you it'll be like quite a vocal like mm, mm -hmm. like i, really I can definitely that. resonate with that yeah. or it'll be like uh, -uh. and yeah. the thing with sacral is it's very black and white there's no like in between and if you're ever a bit iffy about a certain thing it's either that you've gotten in your head about it or you need to give it a little bit more time to like really get clear on that sacral response. Mm -hmm. And that's so, yeah, that's kind of a general overview of the generators, but what makes you a little bit different is you're a bit of a hybridized version of the generator that has a bit of the manifesting energy. Mm -hmm. So quite, um, you've got a lot, you, you're a powerhouse. Like you've got a lot of energy there that can be put to use, not only in the doing part, but you can also initiate, but, the key is, um, and the, the thing that really differentiates you from a net normal generator is that you need to be really discerning with what you say yes to, because you might, and this is what I generally see is that the manifesting generators tend to commit themselves to a lot of different things and not necessarily they want to do it as well. So for you, it's really important to understand that there's going to be a gap between you, like, for instance, your friend asks you to go for a walk and you say yes in the moment and then you might get up and like go to the door and then you get to the door and you kind of get a taster for it and you realise, oh, I don't actually want to do that anymore. But then you might follow through and it turns into a should and, mm -hmm. and that's where you can trip yourself up as if you kind of commit yourself to a lot of different things in the moment without kind of allowing this little gap, you know, 
to allow you to kind of dip your toe into it before you say yes and commit to it. Um, because otherwise you just literally manifest things really quickly, bring almost too much to you too soon. And then you're like, oh my God, I've, my plates are way too full. <laughs> And you're very overwhelmed. And yeah. this is another type that I honestly see a lot of burnout in a lot of autoimmunity, particular thyroid issues, mm -hmm. um, because they can overextend themselves. And, you know, at any point when a generator or manifesting generator starts to do too many things that they should be doing or out of duty or responsibility, that's really clogging up your aura. That's clogging up your ability to like really manifest and attract a life that you are here born to, to live. So um, the more that you can strip away the kind of shoulds or committing yourself to things that don't feel quite in alignment, the more, I guess, you know, beneficial and beautiful opportunities that will start to come because that's kind of coming back into that, that sacral response of like, yes, that thing lights me up or no, it doesn't. And mm -hmm you know, the universe, when you're saying yes to things, it will keep wanting to give you that because that's the nature of your design. Um, and the kind of good thing is about it as well is it's like for you, your strategy is to respond. And this is the only strategy that you can actually start to use right in this moment, right now, you know, and to respond literally means to respond to life, you know, and then life will respond to us. So you could like look at a pretty flower and acknowledge that that's a beautiful flower and that's you responding to the beauty of that flower or mm. yes, I like this teacup or no, I don't like this song on the radio. When you're doing that and being really clear in acknowledging that throughout the day, you're sending that message out there to the universe. That's like, okay, send me more of this good stuff. And it will kind of create this momentum within your life. That's really beautiful. Um, and I've, I've got so many beautiful manifesting generators and generators in my life that are just so fun to be around. And I think you guys don't understand the light that you're actually giving to the world when you are pursuing what you love, because I'll say from a non-energy beings perspective that when I'm in the space of one of you guys, I, I get really inspired and I'll like get really keen to like work on my stuff for the rest of the day and I'll go away like and I'll be riding on your your energy wave and mm -hmm. and you won't see that you won't see the influence that you've had on other people because they leave your space and they don't even you know they don't know that you know if they can't read energy they won't know it was because of you so but I will say mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really uncomfortable to be around um a generator that isn't living what they love to do it's and I'm probably pretty sure you probably felt it too you know mm -hmm. you see someone that's living a life that is just limiting them so much. And that creates a lot of um, what their not self theme is, is frustration. It's kind of the theme that you move into when you're not living in your design. So. God, yeah. God. And oh, there's still two more types. <laughs> um, sorry. I know. Oh, there's still so, much to say. Um, so yeah, the next one is the projector. And that is kind of what I was explaining about a bit about myself before so the projectors are we're kind of here as the guides we're here to really see instead of do so we are the efficiency masters the kind of the ones that can really see into the other and that's because our particular aura is penetrating it can actually plug into the other person and when it does this it allows them to really see into the other in a way that no other type can and it's natural, it's not very natural for this to be quite a magnetic energy. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, when you're speaking to someone and you feel really seen and heard, it's a really nice feeling. Like, it's not often that you come across someone that can do that. And that's kind of the gift of the projector, um, being able to see very clearly into the other and what needs to be tweaked and like put back into place. Um, it can also be just understanding a system like a bigger system such as like the legal system or financial or something like that. And they, they just have an ability to kind of tweak things and, and make it more efficient and better because they have this, this gift of seeing. But the important thing is that they need to remember is not to give unsolicited advice because they can kind of be a bit of a know-it-all and uh, a bit of a bossy boots. And they may have been known that as a kid because... Yeah, right. They can see so clearly into other people, mm -hmm. but, and, you know, they'll just like dump their advice. Yeah. Talking <laughs> and stuff and telling people stuff that they don't want to hear. 
<laughs> they're not ready to hear it yet. So they haven't asked for their advice. So, and what that's going to do, because the projector so desperately wants to be seen all the time, um, that's going to make them feel really bitter and frustrated because the person isn't seeing their genius and they're trying to overextend themselves and try and convince them of what they know. And that's where the projector can get really into a bad place, um, trying to just overgive information to other people that they're not ready to hear yet. But if they just learn to be patient and learn to relax, this is actually a very relaxing energy type because you just simply have to wait to be invited into a situation before you offer out your huge amount of knowledge because um, that's going to feel like a much a much better exchange and you're going to get into your signature which is success you're going to find success by by living in your design becoming um, an expert in your field in your niche um, and that kind of gets projected out in your aura it's like our aura is a billboard right you know like it's kind of projecting that energy out and naturally people are going to come over and like ask you about what you do because you're just projecting this this kind of knowledgeable person and mm -hmm. you know I feel like for me the minute that I did that it transformed the way that I yeah like show up in the world and the way that I attract clients and stuff like that it's it's so it's a much more beautiful exchange it's not like I have to kind of go out there and make it happen and you know what society tells us to do is to like you know Go just do it, it and just keep charging forward and everything keep charging forward and like plaster yourself out there and you know make yourself known and stuff like that and that isn't the best way for the projector to function at all and mm -hmm. if they can just learn to kind of just be quiet <laughs> and not and just wait for people to ask you first i think that would be my biggest piece of advice where you're not going to be draining out all your energy um you know trying to convince people of your point Mm -hmm. Even at the table, you know, you often get the projector trying to inject their opinion all the time. But if they can just sit back and wait for that person to go, to you know, you've been awfully quiet over there. What would you say about the situation? And so and then it all comes uh, up. <laughs> yeah. Then it, then it come out and people will actually hear you and listen. So mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty big game changer if you're a projector. But um, I remember when I learned about it, I was quite disappointed. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> right. This is annoying. <laughs> what do I, I do? Wait. Yeah, I was like, I have to wait, you know, and that's not necessarily the case. I kind of just, I, I really believe that we have to create the invitation rather than us thinking that we just sit on the couch and just wait for people to recognize our gift. You have to put your work out there, but in a way that is generous and in a way that is sharing a lot of your, your genius and stuff like that and, and letting people know what you do and, and educating them on what you do that's kind of the best way for a projector to really market themselves. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, hence like me coming to you wanting to do this interview through like, you know, what you put out and stuff on Instagram, it's all making so much sense. It's like crazy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. It's perfect. It's a perfect exchange this. So yeah, yeah. I'm very grateful. Thank you, Amy. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> And lastly, before we forget, there's the reflector as well, which is only 1% of the population. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And they honestly, I only know two in my life. Um, and they are a really necessary part of society. They, <laughs> all their chart is completely white. They know, have no boxes colored in. And this means that they have a sampling aura. They're here to kind of taste, um, the environment around them. They're constantly reflecting back to others who they are um, and drawing everyone else's energy around them in. And they're kind of like the canary in the coal mine in society, the ones that are meant to be the reflection of humanity, um, greater humanity and the way that the world's functioning. And, you know, this particular type can be really prone again to like chronic illness and stuff because they are so open yep. and they're absorbing everything if they're in the wrong environment then they're going to be they're going to deteriorate um, and be heavily influenced by that environment but if they're in the correct environment then they're going to just flourish and really offer what they're here to offer and they have like a quite a strong connection with the moon cycles and their particular strategy that unlocks their chart is to wait 
28 to 29 days, which is a moon cycle before they make any major decisions in their life so that they can really like feel through that, whether that is the correct thing for them to do, whether it's moving across the country or a major job opportunity or something like that. It's always good for them to like wait for that cycle before they fully commit to that thing. Um, but yeah, it's a very rare type and really fascinating as well because I haven't met it many. So, um, no. yeah. Oh, cool. yeah, they're all so interesting and so unique and different. I wonder like the people who listen to this, if you could like sort of tune in and sort of think about what, what type you might be, um, based on Jenna's representation and like knowing of them, all the different types, it'd be so interesting. And hopefully you've been able to take something from that and sort of can sort of with the very bare basics, right? Sort of yeah. see how you fit in and like change things around it and stuff like that. It'd be really powerful. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so, and then um, from my knowledge and understanding, there's two types of authority as well that comes into each person's human design reading. So there's actually seven authorities. Seven? Oh um, my gosh. I definitely yeah. didn't do my research very well. <laughs> No, no, no. Just sound very basic yeah that's very understandable though because as a generator or a manifesting generator there are only two authorities that you could potentially oh, okay. be yeah right. mm -hmm. um but i would say there's three that are like the most common that i see um and that is so like i'll first just say that the authority is basically your inner guidance system it's really a way of being able to tune in with your intuition and your inner compass in this mm -hmm. world because again we get so heavily influenced by people's opinions and what people in society are doing um, and that can tend to dictate our decision making process so we're essentially take handing our power away to others rather than coming back to within ourselves to make decisions that are in alignment with us um, and that are authentic and i think a lot of the time we get taught to like rationalize decision making in our mind rather than come back to coming into your body and to like really see if a decision's right for you based on your bodily responses because it never lies mm -hmm. um it's just that our trust muscle probably hasn't been flexed that much because we've been so deconditioned out of that um decision making and this particular um part of the chart is very important as well this is like the second point that you would probably learn about about your chart and you can use this even with like deciding what to eat you know even in terms of food and into the right person to be with and stuff like that so it's quite a powerful tool to like really equip yourself with to, and understand how to how to utilize it in your life so um the first authority would be like the sacral authority which is you know what manifesting generators or generators might have and that's that clear cut yes and no gut response um and it, yeah it's kind of what we had already described it really comes from the gut it's um very visceral and it's there's no black there's no gray you know it's just very black and white um and so the other one is the emotional authority which i think you are are you the emotional i think you are i'm not sure <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yes, you're the emotional. I just looked at your chart. So you're an emotional authority. And um, the emotional authority means that anyone that has this has their emotional center colored in, meaning that they create consistent energy through that center. Mm -hmm. So throughout their whole life, they're going to be going through emotional waves. And there's no way you can hold one of those waves back. And it's really important for you to recognize that let you should not identify yourself with the peak or the trough of your wave because emotions are always in motion. They're always going to be moving through you and you shouldn't attach yourself to those things. Um, and because of this, it can kind of cloud judgment around your sacral response. So Ra Uruhu, he says that for those with emotional, there is no truth in the now because depending on where you're at in your emotional wave, it can really influence your decisions and, Ooh, yeah. you know, not necessarily for the benefit, you know, for your benefit. So um, what I, especially as a manifesting generator, because you're going to want to say yes to everything <laughs> um, <laughs> most likely, but um, <laughs> uh, it's really important for you just to say like, 
that sounds like a really fun or great idea or an amazing opportunity, but could I get back to you in a couple of days just so that you can decompress yeah. and like, yeah. you know, really make sure that you're not being charged by that emotional wave. And um, yeah, I think that's just, we're all often taught to like, you know, know what we want in the moment because that shows that we know who we are, right? And all that kind of stuff. So it's just important just to acknowledge, you know, this is how I function and um, to learn what your particular emotional wave is because there's four different types of wave and your wave might show up on a daily basis or it might show up on a weekly or monthly basis. It, everyone's going to be different in the way that your wave shows up, but the more you can understand about it, the easier it will be for you to kind of know where you are at on your wave because it can be a real trip for you guys because one minute you might be like on this wave and then you know in the up by the afternoon and you're like really amped about going to the movies and then in the afternoon you're like oh I don't want to do that anymore and it's kind of confusing right <laughs> it's it literally but like that's like the bane of my life and it's like I'll be like yes like I'm going to commit like my boyfriend's always like to me he's like why can't you make plans and just commit to it and I'm always like I don't know like I'm so sorry like, I just I don't know. I just, it literally has to be like how I'm feeling sort of in that given day, given moment. And then I have to go with that, you know? And yeah. you, that's a really good point to make as well, Amy, is that mm. you, it's important for people around you that are close to you to know that about you, mm. because that's actually as a manifesting generator, you're designed to kind of pivot and just you know, it's okay for you to kind of change your mind. You've got to reserve your right to change your mind last minute. That's mm -hmm. a really important thing for you to know about yourself and not to carry shame around it. Like you're being flaky or something like yeah, that, because yeah, yeah. that's actually your energy type. And the minute you start clogging yourself up with doing things because you committed to it two weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, but you no longer want to do it, it's kind of not right. So for you, just remember that gap that I was saying. So like making sure that you, gift yourself that space between saying yes, um, mm -hmm. feeling, you know, into feeling that gut response again, yeah. making sure that you're in your emotions when you're making the decision, but that can be really hard. I know. I understand. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's like exactly what you said. Like for me, I always find that my gut response is so strong. It literally comes through in words. It's like yes or no. Like if ever I'm confused about something, it'll be yes or no. And the only times I've ever gotten confused with it is if I'm like, listening to other people and I'm getting too much in my mind and like for that for like other people listening you might be able to resonate with that and sort of be like you just really need to like come back to yourself and like go back within and the answer will always I don't know I always find it there absolutely yes mm -hmm. um and I always say to like the generators just to like you were saying to tune in with the vocal sound the vocal cord sound because that is a really good place to start if you haven't been listening to your sacral for a long time it's just going mm, oh actually i just said mm, in that moment and i notice it every time with with you guys is that there's a very visceral kind of acknowledgement in the moment of if something you if something piques your attention or piques your interest it's um quite a vocal sound so you can start tuning into that more so that's really cool yeah wow and then what's the last sort of major authority that people have um, that would be the splenic, the splenic authority and um, the splenic authority is more so reserved to um, like the manifestors and the projectors and the splenic authority is like the splenic authority is a very intuitive um, center in the body chart. It's linked with the spleen and the fears and, the, and anxieties. So it's very deeply intuitive and um, you'll get a hit in the moment of like a knowing it will be like an intuitive voice that tells you to drive that particular way um, that morning to work. And if you don't go that way, you might go your usual way and there's a roadblock there and you're like, damn, I knew I should have gone that way. That's the splenic coming through. And you actually have a little bit of this, like this might come through, but it's a very much quieter voice compared to your mm -hmm. sacral or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, the spleen only gives you one hit in the now and then it won't come back. So like if you were look, viewing houses, for instance, and like you walked into the house and you'd be like, mm, I'm getting a funny vibe here. That's like a no from your spleen or, um, you know, you can really, it's, it's one that's quite mysterious and you have to like learn how to, how to really hear that inner voice. But sometimes say that it really manifests as like almost like 
because it's linked with anxieties and fears, it almost manifests a little bit like butterflies and like a little bit of anxiety. Um, but what can tend to happen is you get into your head at that point and start like intellectualizing the anxiety and then it gets out of hand and then you don't end up doing that thing, which actually was something that excited you a little bit and you got that bodily response that was saying, hey, you need to do that thing. Um, so that's the spleen. And then the other four types, which I won't go into, are like the ego or heart authority. Um, there's also like the self-projected um, authority or the G-centered authority. Um, there's a mental authority as well. And also the lunar authority, which is just reserved for the, for the um, reflectors. So reflectors only have one potential authority and that's the lunar authority, which is waiting the 28 to 29 days um, before they make a decision. But they're all unique and they all um, have slight nuances in the way that they function. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's kind of an overview of the authority. <laughs> wow, so, so interesting. So um, as like an overview, if people wanted to like really make this like really practical and they resonate and say like projector or um, maybe like a reflector or anything like that, like how would you recommend them sort of like, I don't know, like maybe like their habits or something or like what sort of food should they eat or is there any sort of like, sort of like um, broad way of defining things or like what they should do with their day or what sort of job they would be best suited in? Oh, that's a really tricky one to answer, honestly, yeah. because so a different. chart is so nuanced. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if people are aware of this or not, but it's um, just so if you don't know, it's based on your birth time, date and place. So it's based on your birth details. Um, and that's what's giving you this kind of imprint. So um, it depends on, yeah, it depends on the person. I There are like general tips in terms of diet depending on um, your energy type but there's actually a whole other aspect to human design called the primary health system which goes into a lot of detail around um, there's actually 12 different digestions in human design as well as six different senses that you could potentially have that layer onto the way in which you'll um, want to work and as well as digest your food so um, it's a way that really provides you. It's not necessarily telling you specific foods to eat, but it's more in which, in which the way that you relate to food and to relate to your environment, the way that your body wants to. So um, it's, yeah, it's very different to like what we've ever learned about um, nutrition or food or anything like that. Because when, again, it's a huge conditioning field within us is that food, you know, marketing, even the way that the government tells us to eat within this food pyramid or what schools taught you when you're a kid, what your parents fed you. You virtually didn't really get to choose the foods you ate from when you were a baby, your parents did. So you didn't have a lot of autonomy there. And um, even in the health realm, you know, we kind of get swayed into like, oh, that's a healthy way of eating. But for someone that might actually be a really bad way for them to eat. Like, for instance, you know, I wouldn't suggest that a projector intermittent fasts because oh. they don't have their sacral colored in. They don't getting that consistent flow of energy and they need to actually be eating small light meals periodically throughout the day. And they should avoid overeating and having like one big meal, you know, <laughs> at that point of the day, because they aren't supposed to feel weighed down. They're supposed to feel light, but they need a constant supply of energy to their brain but this kind of changes because there's other parts of the chart that can show you like for you for instance amy you have a very active brain and so your brain requires a lot of glucose and it would be really important for you to make sure that you're consistently providing that for yourself um and and not feeling bad if you want to eat like quite a big meal because as a manifesting generator you have a quite a fiery metabolism and you'll want to like make sure that you're giving yourself enough nourishment throughout the day and not like withholding that from yourself because mm. you need it. <laughs> you need oh, it for your brain. <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely find that like even a day of study, like if I haven't even exercised, it'll be like, why? I, like, I'm so hungry. Like, and I just, it's like a constant thing. Like I can't yes. miss a meal. Like I need to have like consistent sort of like really nourishing like food yep. to yep. be able to like function my best and to like, yeah ultimately feel energized and vibrant and everything like that and consistent yeah yeah that makes so much sense so so much sense um yeah so 
yeah, there's a lot of different <laughs> potentials, I guess. So it's hard to kind of give just generalized advice, but, um, but yeah, that kind of gives you a taster of like the depth in which you can go with it. Um, you know, even being able to layer, layer on your particular, your more dominant sense is really a beautiful thing. Um, maybe I'll give the example of your sense yeah. if you're comfortable with that, yeah, sure. um, which is feeling. And um, so, yeah, the feeling sense is really interesting. It just means that you are highly attuned to your environment and you just get feeling of like something's right for you or not right for you. Even if it's like, if you went to a farmer's market, you'd be able to like pick the foods and like look at them and just feel if something's right for you or incorrect for you. Mm -hmm. um, but another part of this, because you're so sensitive to frequencies of your environment, it's important that you don't eat near like technology or EMF. Um, make sure that you're about six feet away from it because you're highly sensitive to EMF frequencies and mm -hmm. sleeping at night, trying to have no technology in your room, for instance, and making sure that your Wi-Fi is turned off at night and stuff like that will actually help your whole nervous system because you're so highly attuned and sensitive to the environment mm -hmm. um, in that way. How do yeah. you, so like managing the EMFs would literally just be like sort of making sure that you stay away from technology for like certain periods of the day. Um, yeah. What did you say? Six meters? Oh, it's in six feet. Six yeah. Feet. So like six feet away. So if you were eating, just try and not be near your phone. Um, just put your phone away or put it on flight mode or something like that so mm -hmm. that the EMF is off. Just try it as much as you can to be more conscious of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we have to use computers throughout the day, but maybe you have certain crystals, or, you know, um, there's flower essences and stuff like that that you can take to kind of help to discharge that energy from you. And you can do things like have a salt bath or like, have a salt scrub and stuff like that that helps you to discharge that electromagnetic frequency from your body or swim in the ocean as well as like another mm. really oh my thing. ultimate favorite so like sometimes yeah. you know you just crave it so much um so what are the other sort of senses is people is it something that people are able to tune into themselves and sort of like resonate with one or is it more like a reading from your chart Maybe. it's a reading from your chart everything that we're kind of discussing is you might resonate with certain things mm -hmm. like um and that's cool because we actually have all the charts within our own chart so it makes a lot of sense and mm -hmm. um yes a certain energy type might really resonate with you but it's actually really hard to actually pinpoint someone's energy type because it depends on conditioning it depends on you know your parents and stuff like that if you've been functioning like a projector for a really long time or thinking that you know that is kind of you but you're not that you're a manifester or you know it's just one of the really hard things to kind of really land on upon yourself um though when you do find out your type you'll go oh yeah that just makes so much sense it will be like a very resounding resonant feeling within your body when you get and you can kind of like i guess hand it over to your birth details and so that's where it is really important to have the correct time um, of your birth because a chart can really change within like a minute, you know, within the space of a minute, it could completely change. So having the correct birth details is really important to get a really thorough um, reading or one that you can really lean into that you can really trust. Um, I find that to be really beneficial, but I have actually had, had some clients that couldn't get hold of their birth chart or, um, but their parents knew like a two hour window in which yeah, yeah. Um, they were born. And luckily for some people, their chart doesn't change within that time. And that's how you can kind of, if you look at a few potential times within that space, and if it doesn't change, then that's great. And that's um, most likely going to be your chart. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you can kind of do it that way as well, but it is really important to have your birth details mm -hmm. for understanding all these nuances about you um, because it's, it's informing, like I said, this energetic imprintation made on your DNA. So it's, it's very deep and a lot of it is subconscious. And it's like we're bringing during this, um, while I read someone's chart, I'm literally just bring, bringing awareness to these different aspects of yourself. And I feel like just having awareness of things is like half the work done, you know, because what we don't know, we don't know. And that never gets kind of lifted up. So um so yeah, that's another reason why <laughs> it's, it is really important to kind of like, 
have those birth date details in and um, yeah. yeah, to get the proper analysis done. Yeah, so like going back to what you're sort of saying at the beginning about your birth time and when you sort of come into the world and how, you know, like you've chosen a specific time, does that, you know, like when say like a woman's giving birth to a baby, it's literally like the baby deciding what time to come through, would you say more? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's so powerful, hey? It's well, like, yeah, it's so attuned. It depends on how, yeah, like depends on how like open you are to that kind of stuff. But I really believe that we choose the parents and we choose the environment in which we've kind of been brought up in because whether it's led to a lot of conditioning or not, it's triggered us into an evolutionary process that we've been put here to kind of go through. And, um, and yeah, there's kind of other ways to kind of know what particular design you may have been living out in past lifetimes or elements of your chart that said that are a bit more developed within you. Um, than other elements of your chart, which uh, mean that they're a bit more conscious in your awareness um, and you have greater access to them. But then there's also parts that live more in the unconscious because there are newer aspects that you've just brought into this lifetime to yeah. kind of do what you do in this lifetime, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. So yeah, oh, it's pretty interesting and deep. <laughs> so, so interesting. I, I feel like we've literally just dipped our toe into the surface of this like amazing abyss of human design we might even have to come back and do a number two and more detail and everything like that if people are really interested in that so if you are really interested like let me know because I'm really interested in it and I've literally resonated with every single thing you've said it's actually been ridiculous <laughs> um so where can people get in contact with you and learn more um sort of get hold of your services yeah yeah, so um, I have my Instagram account, Health Alchemist, where I do share quite a lot of content there, mm -hmm. not just on human design. I've been kind of drip feeding human design into there because I know a lot of my followers are following me for natu naturopathic and nutritional stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go onto my website, www.healthalchemist.com.au, um, you can get in touch there and read a little bit more about human design and like what I actually do, like how I hold a reading and stuff like that um, through my website. And you can shoot me an email if you want to um, tee up a time to, to have a consult. Amazing. And I will link um, Jenna's Instagram and her website and everything down below for anyone who's interested and wants to get in contact but yeah feel free to shoot through either of us any questions or suggestions if you'd like to see another one that would be great thank you all so much for joining me on this interview today with jenna if you all enjoyed it please subscribe give me a like on my channel as it really supports me and helps me know what sort of content you guys are liking yeah remember to follow on on my instagram at amy jade wellness for all updates and new interviews coming out each month and yeah, also let me know if you guys would like to see more and for Jenna and I to continue with another interview as I know we both really, really enjoyed this and I found it so helpful myself. So I'm sure you guys will too. Thanks heaps and I'll see you next time. Bye.